Cool, cool. Cool. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. Cool cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. 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 Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. I wish I had that kind without of genius. That, without the headphones, I would have never known there was like hella bass. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> super deep. Uh, Running deep. All right. Introduce the podcast. Oh, yeah. This is the Weekly Relapse, and I am the George High Guy. You are the to George. The relapse, George the High Guy. There it is. Potter. I found it. Dab works. <clears throat> I'm always dancing in the back of the shop whenever this comes on. Like my buddy asks, he's like, "What the hell's wrong with you?" Like, man, this one was jazzy, bro. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Weekly Relapse. This is Skylar. Thank you for tuning in. I had to say that as fast as possible. Yes, yes. Got George, the motherfucking high guy. George, the high guy. One of my favorite people on the planet. Oh man, dude, cool beans, man. Cool, 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 cool beans. I've never started a podcast like that. Oh, funny that you mentioned that song. Uh, Matt Viegas mm-hmm. ran into that band last night in Lubbock. Their name is Beat Bodega, and they oh, yeah. hung out and stuff. And oh. uh, he actually hit me up today and was like, dude, thanks again. Because I'm fairly certain I asked him if I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I was listening to your shit and was like, that's a great open. I feel like I asked, you know. Well, sure. I mean, I don't think anybody, you know, any advertisement's free advertisement, which is good advertisement. Yeah. So, so what, 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 you, what you been up to, man? Man, hanging out, working, trying out this stand-up thing, man. It was pretty cool. I've, I've got five shows under my belt now, I think. Four yeah, or five. doing fucking open mics, and you yeah. did the caffeinated uh, yeah, that one, comedy. Man, that those guys from Lubbock were fucking good, bro. They well, were hilarious. They're hilarious. They and just like, got more venues. I realized that. Well, but. that, and then uh, we've never, I've never even witnessed a roast battle. Yeah. It was uh, so. It's one of those things where they were able to prepare. Substan. It's like yeah. right now. If I like, okay, I rode a bike five times. Right. Oh come on! Don't start. No, so no, no, no. Skyler's no, no, been on. riding a bike for a week. No, no. What I'm saying, like, swole. but no, no. If I like, that's like me thinking I could fucking race Lance Armstrong. Oh yeah. yeah. You well, know what I'm saying? In, yeah. in, a, in a matter of speaking, because like I've never even like I. I can I can never compare. Those guys are fucking badass, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, they've got you know the what three or four venues that they one of them closed, so they're down to like three now. So they've yeah. got they've got opportunities, you know. But uh, ca- caffeinated coffee and all that. Those guys are coming around now. You know, we've got you know three shows a week now or three shows a month now, one, once a week. So I mean, well, no, I uh, we actually just started a fourth open mic. So now we have four. Yeah. We have a, we have a guaranteed four open mics for comics. Uh, to do a month, and then uh, it, Landry puts together the caffeinated oh, yeah. coffee yeah. or comedy. I always do that. I yeah. always say caffeinated coffee. It's so weird. I, guess, I think it's because it's at a coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, caffeinated comedy. He puts that together. That's all him, dude. He's, he put his, all that his shit brain together. Child. And uh, yeah, like I just want to witness a roast battle before I participate in one. It was. I want to know how to prepare for one. I've never been involved. These guys literally. They were on Facebook on the ride from Lubbock, like on Facebook, going through everybody's profiles. And, like, everything that showed up was stuff that was on everybody's, you know, they'd bang the key on the fucking, well, I mean, obviously the black and where's your food stamps card, but, like, uh, Austin, they were making fun of him for being the wrestler. Like, come on, dude, what are you talking about? You're a wrestler. Yeah, see, they, so, they knew how to prepare for this. Yeah, and yeah. you were like, you and your, your yeah, beard. Wow. <laughs> JJ, you look like a, a dude. Gay JJ's Jesus. awesome. Yeah, dude. man, good dude, good JJ dude. JJ is he burned, fucking he burned badass. the shit out of me, man. I had to hug him on stage. It was legit. But I mean, it was good, man. Uh, after that one, you know, it took me about a month before I was like, okay, let's get back on stage. Let's all right, stop being a pussy. This is <laughs> this is and, something you want to do. You so good. go do it. And then Thomas has been doing it. He's yeah, been getting on Thomas stage. Thomas rocked it, dude. He's, he uh, he, he was so nervous. He was like, "Man, I need you to stay. Don't go home. I need you to stay." And I was like, "Dude, you're gonna do fine." You do Which is show hilarious. Is because yeah, he's hosting. A, he uh, and like, I feel hosting is a different beast. I don't like oh, hosting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that I dislike. It. That's wrong to say. I I far more enjoy performing. Yeah. You gotta you gotta run the crowd. As a host, <laughs> you know, Matt does a really good job hosting, but I think Matt's gotten so used to doing the 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 stand up part of it that he's he. He does really good, don't get me wrong, but he tries to stand there and do bits instead of trying to get a motherfucker on stage, you know, which is fine and all, you know, you got to get the crowd back going well, see, if somebody wasn't so there's, good, there's, you know. There's, there's different styles, and I think that that's, like, that's a style I would never attempt. 
I just because it's scary, man. Right, yeah. You have one shot. <laughs> yeah. You have one fucking shot, really so it's shit. really ballsy to go that route. Um, to just introduce and host and stuff, I find that that's my comfort zone. Um, just because, just yeah. Well, like all you gotta do is like, man, that was awesome, right, guys? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, they clap, going, yeah, and job, I yeah. clap, make them clap again. Oh no, man, this guy's put the fucking energy <laughs> in for this <laughs> yeah. clap. Yeah, it's easy to be that guy. Um, where Matt's coming from, that's scary, man. Like he's throwing out a brand new, or whether it's new or not, you get one yeah. punchline. And then you're off the fucking yeah, yeah. stage. Two minutes you can't introduction, tell a, sto- tell a little joke and go. Yeah, maybe not even two minutes. Like you might be, you might be up there for forty five seconds, including your introduction. So you do like a thirty minute or thirty second little boop. Yeah, and then you just gotta go. Here's this fucking dude. I'm out. You gotta hope it lands. <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah. no like if it doesn't land to go. Well, I know my next joke's gonna hit. <laughs> it's not there. That's not an opportunity. I've, I've got ten minutes before I gotta think about this one real hard again. Yeah, so <laughs> it's cool, man. I dig it. Uh, you know, I uh, I did the podcast with you, and then you were like, "Come do this." And so, so from then to now, it seems it's almost like you know. In the beginning, I was super nervous about it. You know, obviously, you know the jitters and stuff. We've talked about that. You know, you get super jittery before you go up, but uh, after after taking that meeting from those guys in Lubbock, and then coming back that last time and doing that one, you know, I mean, obviously the whiskey greases you up and everything goes a lot easier, but I mean, I felt I was super comfortable compared to the last time I was on, uh, did the, did the battle with those guys from Lubbock and man, it's fun. I, uh, I was just talking to my dad about it earlier today. We had a storm come through and I had to go cut a tree up. So uh, we were hanging out bullshit and, and, uh, told him about it. And he was like, well, got to get back on that horse. And I was like, dad, I've never ridden a fucking horse. You know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it was cool. I, I got back up there and you know, did it. it was horses, great. Man. <laughs> I <laughs> really am kicked in the face, man. I scary. didn't get kicked. I, have him. you ever been on a horse? Uh, yeah. A couple of times. Whenever I was little, we, we drove up from Lubbock and did the, uh, did the little horse thing through Pelletier Canyon. Fuck that shit, dude. I, I had to ride a horse one time and I'm sure I'd enjoy it as an adult, but I had to do this shit as a kid. It's scary. And, uh, I had to go to some camp, you know, the, like how your mom sends you to summer camp. Cause no, they're like, we were poor. Dude, we were poor too. My mom was just like, <laughs> I can't fucking put up with you. Get the this fuck is, out of this here. is just as much money as a babysitter. You're fucking out of here. I don't have to have you at night. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, I'm sure that's not how she and felt. I don't have if to my have mom you at hears night. that, that would break her heart. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But you know, like I had to go to some fucking and like this was one I did not like, and I almost preferred the church camps over this camp because mm. um, it was some because there was molestation. Nah, dude, it was all fucking. It was just red. It was like it was like a like a ranch. Mm. Like you rode horses. I cried on top of a. F- I just remembered this. Holy shit! I got the rock wall shut down one day. <laughs> 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 When's gonna be my turn? <laughs> no, no, dude. I I had the fastest time getting up the wall. I was the fastest person. Like they were timing everybody. Dude, I made it up there. It was a huge. It was fucking tall, dude. It wasn't wow. like in a in a building. It was like two, three. It felt like it, as a kid, it felt like, like nine real, stories. Was it real rocks? No, it was like it was like a square. You can tell they built it. Oh, okay. It, it had handles like a, and shit. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got all the way. I had a harness and everything. Um, got all the way up there, and you had to climb one side, repel the other. Nice. And I had the fastest time up there, and then I cried for thirty minutes until they shut it down. I didn't know how I was gonna get down. I couldn't get down. I was like, I can't. Like, I they wanted me to lean backwards <laughs> off this fucking <laughs> off the, wall. Off the back. And I was okay. like, I don't even know your name, yeah, dude. Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Fuck you. <laughs> so everyone got to go swim in extra early that day. <laughs> <laughs> did did they have to rescue you, or did they help you climb down? Yeah, like uh, they eventually just like there was no honor. I had to climb down. Like you know what I mean? There was no like back down the face. Were they gonna get a fucking helicopter? Or it, like no, and then I have to climb more. High, like fuck that. Those, like, g- those guys have to be. They were trained to rescue. They they were they've been trained to to put you on their back. They were just like trust down. me, bro. And then whenever I did it. It was so fun. It was the it? funnest thing. Fuck yeah. It was Let like, me jump off this thing 14 times. And I was like, let's reopen the rock wall. And they were like, fuck you, kid. <laughs> you just ruined our entire plans for the day. Because like, I was even like, mo- I wasn't the only one crying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kids cry. But yeah, they, no, that's a tough step. But they got their time. shit together way faster than I did. Like it took me, it, dude, it took me like a salt. Like I'm not even bullshitting, like 35 minutes. No, I get it, man. Let me tell you, climbing cell phone towers, man, that was the hardest thing was the going down. Because, you know, you go up and you're just concentrating on hold on, don't look down, don't fall. So at the end of the day, after you've been working and concentrating, you know, you've always got your mind on what you're doing. You're never paying attention to what's going on underneath you. That You've got 280 foot of death below you. 280 feet. Yeah. That, so our normal our normal working area was 300 foot. Uh, the highest I ever got was 800 foot. And let me tell you, smoking a joint at 800 foot was probably the coolest fucking thing I've ever done. Uh, and I've called prostitutes, but anyway, so <laughs> at the end, at the end of the day, you've been paying attention to what you've got going on underneath and, you know, you're just working, you know, you're not paying attention that you're 300 foot in the air 
and then you finally stop at the end of the day after you sent all your tools down and then you look down 280 foot like holy shit this is what i've been doing all day and we have to train to rescue people from that high so that means if somebody were to get hurt fucking fall into their equipment on the tower uh you know we, we had to figure out how to get them off the tower you know without hurting them and i've done 12 13 re- practice rescues where i've Jesus, got a guy just dude. in my harness rescuing him it's man it's so cool but i just looked up images of 300 feet in the air <laughs> oh yeah 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 uh so at 300 foot a semi truck looks about the same size as a full-size pickup at 800 foot a, a full-size semi truck looks about the size when did you go 800 hold on what the fuck <laughs> what kind of tower is 800 feet tall uh the one that we were doing at the time we were we were doing a bunch of decom on it we were taking a bunch of old lines and stuff out of it uh it was a broadcast tower for a radio station out in east texas uh a lot of the stuff that was on it was old ham guy radios like old guys that you know apocalypse they've still got their ham radios so they've got their, their I'm antennas and transmitters. Yeah, I'm shit. about that life. Uh, man, it's so cool, man. So, so meeting some of those dudes, like you're like, okay, so, all right, I see what you got going. And then you go to their houses where they've got these towers, and then they're like, hey, man, you want to come check out this little bunker I got? And you go downstairs, and it's like one whole wall is dedicated ammo, and then they, they got this whole like back storage room that's like the cold area. Yeah, and this dude just shit. works at like Burger <coughs> King or the or the post office or something. Yeah, this is the guy who's yeah. dropping your mail every day. Yeah. And you're like, hey, Roy. And he's all, hey, man, let me know if you got any spent casings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he probably doesn't mention anything. Have a good day. Yeah. He's just quiet. He doesn't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. Nobody knows this dude. Mm-hmm. He's like, kind of, like as a mailman, cool. other guy was social, you're off the fucking grid. Yeah. Uh, one guy, he'd missing a, he, we, he, was, he stacked his own tiny little tower in his, like his back 40 or whatever. And uh, whenever they're putting the sections together, crushed a, crushed a finger off. So he was missing a finger. Jesus. Yeah. But, uh, you That's know, it's too much. Uh, no, dude, it was so cool. Don't get me wrong, man. Like the the worst part of the job was to climb. I mean, so you dr- we you know, you're up in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, if you've seen the picture, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere. So you drive 45 minutes an hour to get to the site. And then once you get there, you got to get all your shit ready that you're going to need up in the air. And then, fuck, now I got to climb 300 foot. You know, once you get up there, I mean, it's like I mean, it's no different than sitting across from me to you. You know, we're handing tools back and forth. Every once in a while, you got to get down into your rope underneath some shit. But, you know, you've got Y lanyards and fall protection and shit. And then plus the guys that I'm working with, man, I've trusted, you know, I trust my life with them. We've done these practice rescues and shit. You know, I've literally put my life in their hands. So it's, you know, we train for it. But, I mean, it's like God, some dude. of this stuff, it's so odd. Like, I mean, dude, I got to travel all over the place, man. One, uh, I just, I, I've always wanted, like, a dope job like that. I mean, I know I'm not cut from the right cloth to do it. Like, I'd do it <laughs> once and be like, yeah, fuck that. Oh, but don't get me wrong. It's going back to the life. tattoo shop. But yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to go sand these, sand these doors afterwards. When I lived in my apartment, dude, I met this guy. I fucking, I think his name was JP or JD or something like that. It was, it was the initials. Uh, PJ, maybe. Something like that. I think it was PJ. It doesn't matter. It has no relevancy to the story whatsoever. <laughs> um, he was a uh, firefighter, right? Yeah. But uh, he did the, uh, I forgot what he called it, like aerial. Like, he fucking would rappel out of a helicopter. That's awesome. And to, like. In the middle of nowhere, yeah, and like they would do either pro oh, the, the hot or shot stuff, the hot shot guys, yeah. Uh, he was training to become like a guy who fucking skydived in for some reason. Like, they're different, they're they're like at more dangerous locations or something, yeah, because they gotta dive right in the middle of the fire, yeah. Those, yeah, that's those what guys he, are awesome, this, yeah. And this dude just did yoga and he didn't <laughs> have a TV. He just had a laptop and one pillow. That's what that was his couch. I'm not bullshitting. He drank a uh, bullet rum. That was like straight. Like he wow. just he chill it with like one eye. like he had, a, had and a circular ice cube. Yeah, not even that. Like one of the fucking whiskey rocks or some oh, shit. Yeah, like yeah. he was about this. Wi- <laughs> and like it's actually funny how I, I met him. I, I looked at my shirt because <laughs> I I had a uh, earlier I had a keep one rolled T shirt on, and uh, I was walking down. I just taking out the trash or walking my dog. I think I was taking Luffy out, mm. and he was moving in, and we like we like ran into each other. Nice. I saw him read my shirt. And we made eye contact, and I go, uh. I you know I, I was caught, so I just <laughs> go, want to take a dab? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, uh, yeah, yeah I fucking yeah. totally Let's do. do this. That's cool, <laughs> man. That, it was it was cool, dude. Like I said, I got to travel all over the country, Mississippi. I, so I'm working at Hooters. This is circa. 2012 ish something like that you old motherfucker yeah, I'm, just I'm 36 in july man i was just thinking about that today like, fuck, fuck man i'm half dead already <laughs> uh so i'm working at hooters these guys show up and they're just basically throwing money away you know and i'm like what the fuck man i'm cooking you know we, that was back when we had the open kitchen and you could see the you know you could see the crowd and these guys would come in and sit at the bar every day i'm talking fucking every day we saw them and i'm like what the fuck do you guys do like how are you spending so much money at hooters every single day and they're like man we could we work on communication towers and i was like okay like what does that even mean 
and they're like, well, man, we like the way you work. If you, if you want to make some money, come check it out. And so I took a weekend off and went out there and went with them to a little tiny tower outside, of, just outside of Tulia. And then uh, two weeks later, I'm in fucking Jackson, Mississippi. And then three months after that, it would be I'm so in much. It would be so good if that was like a movie, right? And this is how it would work out, though. Like you're like, oh yeah, see, so t- I took the weekend off. I went out there. We went up to this tower, and th- you have to like see it from like, the camera point of view. Like you're just standing in front of the tower, yeah. looking at it, go. No, fuck that. And you, and like basically, you just sat in the car and played on your phone for the rest of the day, and then like you picked up your Saturday shift. Oh, that helped. <laughs> so, so how did it go, George? Like, fuck that, uh-uh. dude, dude. We got nope. we got two burgers. Shut the fuck nope. up. Yeah. So whenever I first started, drop uh, some fries. The bu- yeah, yeah. <laughs> back on. You get them wings working. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got it. We got to the job site, and the boss wasn't there yet. Joe, he's a he's a very outspoken individual. Uh, you've you've been part of a conversation. But anyway, so he's uh, he's on his way to the job site. We, they were, we were supposed to have this stuff done before he got there, and he's already on the phone cussing everybody. And he's got this radio in his truck that he can talk to us, to our trucks, and he's fucking cussing everybody on the radios in the truck. So, uh, like, man, we got to get this stuff done. We had to drill out holes. Every every four foot, there were these holes. that they uh, That's how you clip the, the lines and keep the lines to the tower. But the lines were too – the holes that we did these clippings in were too small, so we had to carry this – this router bit, well, not a router bit. It's a we call it a Christmas tree. I can't think of what it's called, but we had to go bore these things out. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, three hundred foot every four foot up this tower. Well, that sound that was your first day. That was my first and day, and you bro. were like, "I'm gonna do this job." Whenever I talked to him, he was like, "How are you with heights?" And I was like, "I'm great because I don't fuck with them. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't do heights." And he was like, "Okay." He's like, "What about electricity?" I was like, "Man, I like, I like that stuff. I like electric. I like running wires and connecting shit." He's like, "Okay, well, we've got all these these power plants that we're gonna do coming up, so." Come do the electrical, and we'll get you some money. I was like, all right, cool, let's go. So this first day, I'm just on this Tulia job, you know. We hadn't yeah. even left yet. And uh, I'm like, man, we got to get this shit done. I don't want to listen to Joe's bitching because this guy, man. So he would get super drunk at Hooters and then cuss all of his workers out. Like, you know, we got to be at the fucking trucks at 7 in the morning, you Dude, motherfuckers. I saw a fight out at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings that was pretty similar to that. How long ago? Because it was probably um, them. Uh, it was at the, the one out by the airport. Um, oh no no no! They would always go to the one around culture. But uh, <coughs> it was it was this was six seven years ago. Oh uh, yeah, that was probably then then. Um, the kid got fired because uh, I I don't remember what happened. I had to take him home. Me and this dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> I know you don't to, know me. We bro. took him to a hotel, like the hotel that he was staying at. Because uh-huh. okay, what happened was the boss started yelling at them. I don't know because I was I was working the front. Uh, and uh, me and the server that ended up taking them in the in the Buffalo Wild Wings bus with like the fucking <laughs> nice. mi- yeah dude like we, it was just me this drunk dude who's covered in blood and and then Rob is just Robbie's just driving and like okay anyway well, how he hurt himself was they they were yelling and they were like back and forth they wouldn't let him get in the car because he was this other the younger kid I feel like he wasn't the boss I feel like he was one of the employees uh-huh. was like man fuck that I'm fucking tired of your shit da 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 and then he grabs the window because the, the guy's rolling it's oh, yeah. rolled down just a little bit he grabs it and rips it out bro because you know how like they're like that safety glass yeah yeah it just fucking it, it's just hanging on the side of the car now. <laughs> His hands are all fucked up, and we were like, awesome. "Dude, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen." <laughs> I I was blown the fuck away because I was like, "This guy has to work in the morning. Like, he, yeah. like he's not home. Yeah, he's staying in a company paid hotel. He just yeah. lost his job, cussed out his fucking boss, mm-hmm. tried to fight him, yeah. hurt himself, and then probably in the morning because they were all pretty tipsy, they're gonna go, the, my the, bad.' They were gonna, yeah, that's exactly how it happens. They go back to work. I can't tell you how many times it." We blew up at each other on the road over some dumb shit. Like, get the fuck out of my room, Jonas. I'm trying to go to sleep. Like, man, th- this is my fucking PlayStation, bitch. And I'm like, God damn it. Fuck you, Jonas. Get out of here. You know? And then in the morning, like, what's up, dog? You want to get this coffee going? Like, I got some weed. What's up? You know? Yeah. In the truck. Like, hey, man, sorry. Like, yeah, fuck it. Whatever. Just, you want to play some video games tonight? Like, yeah, fuck yeah. And then the same thing. Yeah. Fuck you, Jonas. Yeah. No, then, no, then it's, fuck you, George. It's my turn to play. Like, bitch, you were here all night. You know? Yeah. So, it was cool, man. It, it was a, certainly a brotherhood, but you know, the traveling part, being away from home, was definitely the hardest thing. But, uh, man, I, like I said, I got, I mean, I got my ass licked in five different states, man. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, you know, most people have bucket lists. Like, let's climb Mount Everest. And, like, I, would, I just want to get my ass licked all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> I never like that's that's crazy too. People do have bucket lists. Like, yeah. I I think about stuff, but I really don't have anything. I guess jotted down that I have. I know to it's do. all here because if I wrote it down, they would probably put me in jail. Well, no, no, not even like that. Just like I don't have anything that like I have. Like, I want to go skydiving. I would love that. Yeah, that's a bucket list, right? I there. used to want to go scuba diving, but scuba I have ear diving. I have ear problems. Um, so, Aww. yeah, dude, fuck that. And besides, fuck the ocean. <clears throat> That's scary shit, yeah, man. Yeah, fish can swallow you whole. What the fuck? Yeah, has that happened to somebody? Has Jonah, to. Jonah, right. uh, allegedly. 
It's the, I mean, you know, there's always shark bites and stuff, but, you know, there, yeah. I don't think there's one confirmed. There's that dude that got whale. fucking attacked by a shark on TV like at a surf competition. Have you seen that? Uh, the, I, mean, I, I want to say there was something I saw where the, there was like maybe a shark in the wave or something and like it was a live situation, but I didn't, I didn't know if it, they, they got a hold of him or anything like that. But <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I th- I've been to the ocean three times in my life and I go out just under the nipples because I can still run in water that deep. So, uh, it was, it was, man, I just don't like it. And besides whenever that kelp or whatever, the, the seaweed shit gets, ugh, it's so slimy and yuck, get off of me. But the, oh, have you seen that Tom Segura? The no. one where he's laying in the bed? No, I'll have to check it out, dude. <laughs> so there's a whole lot of precursor to it. Uh, there was another guy that did the, sa- the same video, at, but Tom was just Except all these it. videos are like three – there's like not like a 30-second clip of it. But it's that guy, dude. Like they had to – like he he was Five fine. Seconds. He was fine. Like it just kind of got his like – Bumped him or something? Nah, yeah, it kind of like got his fucking bored. Like it, you know oh, I mean? okay. Like you see the struggle. It, it's yeah. no bullshit. Yeah. I feel like they, they exaggerated the fin size there. No, I don't know. I mean, dude, those things are huge. I mean, you're talking like baby sharks start out at two and a half foot. You know what I'm saying? I got to dissect one in, in whenever I was in junior high or high school, man. Those things, I mean. That's insane. Yeah. What kind of shark did they give you? It was like a nurse shark or something. Like they were, they're. So I think it was like the mom was already pregnant, but had problems, had got caught. But, you know, they they always do rescue stuff. So I I, I wouldn't do that stuff. Did I you would... dissect a cat or an earthworm in school? They tried to get me to. I'm sure. Oh man, that's those, not for me. Those man. are the only days I didn't skip science. Those, man. those are totally. That shit's not for me. Yeah, dude, it was cool, man. Some but some fucking awesome. bitch over at the fucking <laughs> East Campus Amarillo College. I don't know what I don't know what the fuck <laughs> happened over here, dude. I go there. And uh, it's probably because I was cracking jokes. <laughs> How do I think about yeah. it? Because it was at the East Campus out by County. Yeah. And they were like, any of you guys been here before? And I was like, I've been next door. Like, you know, trying, to, <laughs> yeah. trying to lighten the mood, yeah. right? Uh, like, early on in the in – the, we're supposed to take a tour. They're going to show us programs. And it's like – it's more of like the mechanics and oh, yeah, shit yeah. like that. Like, uh-huh. it's like trade school, more yeah. or less. And um, she uh, pulls me to the side. The whole class walks by. She was like, we have a great – she looked at me right in the fucking eyes, by the way, like, and said this sincerely. We have a great mortuary program that I think you would be very interested in. I was like, bitch, what the fuck am I wearing? <laughs> that, I was like, I don't even like bugs. Like, I can't – there's no fucking way. I left. I didn't even it's finish the tour, dude. You're cracking bad jokes. It's first thing in. They're like, man, this guy's sick and twisted. He probably wants to see dead people. Dude, I was like, you're I, – I was so upset. I bet she thinks about it just as much as I do. Because, <laughs> like, my reaction was not what she was ready for. I wasn't like, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Why did you pull me to the side to even talk to me, Straight dude? Cousin. Like, you couldn't have waited until we got to the fucking room out there. Yeah, it couldn't have been like, because you're going to warn everybody else. You're going to be like, you love this. Yeah, Come on in. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. It's like, you look like you're a great weightlifter mechanic. And like, you look like you like to run and ride bikes and fuck with dead people. But as far as the ocean, dude, rude. man, I you see too many videos or just shit, man. Like, I think like, I saw a video of a guy, like, scuba diving that saw a submarine. Oh, yeah, dude. That's just, this shit's just out there. So so we literally know more about the surface of Mars than we do the entire surface of the so planet. Do we, do, because are we able to keep track of what's going under the water, like as far as submarines? Like Not uh, at all. So like there could just be... We like, don't know what North and South Korea and Vietnam and... Not Vietnam. Cause obviously so how do we know if there's not like a fucking submarine from a... Uh, I, you're, you're, asking, you're asking your own question right now. Yeah. You're answering your own... How do we know? Yeah, we don't. We, we don't. We no, just assume. No, we don't. How do, do you think? So they have to have like sonar. Like we, we probably have a we have probably have a couple submarines just sure, hanging out. Sure, we with, do. But the stealth, of, the stealth bomber, that same kind of technology can be adapted to a, a submarine. Like we don't know. Like we've man. Okay, so I I got really. That's another crazy job. What do you do? I fly a stealth bomber. Yeah. So I working at Hooters, I actually met a, a colonel in the Air Force, and he would every other weekend he would fly back and forth across the country just training. Have you weep, ever weep, have weep. you ever seen a stealth bomber like in person? Uh, I saw one at the airport. I don't know why I was there. It was probably flying across country refueling. Yeah, dude, they look fucking <coughs> gnarly. Like you look at that, and it's like for, like especially when I saw it, I was like fucking child. Oh you know yeah, what I mean, I was a kid. <gasps> Wow. Dude, it looks like it's from the future. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it almost. Dude, seeing one in person is almost badass enough to make you want to join the air force. Right. Like you look at it and you're like, I want to be part of whatever I, this is I part of. Something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't even like Star Wars. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I was like, call me Luke Skywalker, yeah, bitch. Right. Put me I'm in the. Ca- like, I want to. Where does R two D two sit? Let me get. Let me check this but bitch out. We used to like, go to air shows and shit whenever I was little. So I, yeah, I got to see. 
you know, like uh, the F-16 Tomcat and shit like that up close. The the old, uh, uh, not B-2 bombers, I can't remember the one that had the, the glass fronts on the, the front with the gunner ball. I can't remember what it was, but I've got to see shit like that as a little kid. Man. I've it was always, really cool. I've, I, I think I've maybe, I can't recall, like I feel like I have a memory of seeing an air show. I actually got lost for the first time, like couldn't find family the first time at an air show, dude. I was freaking I've, the fuck out. That happened to me at Six Flags. Oh my god! Yeah, that was fucking terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, dude, oh, dude, I was like, I was probably like six. I was just looking at the planes, made a little half turn, and they were gone. One time in like United, I was walking by my mom, looked at something, and then just started following the wrong person. <laughs> you smell like my mom. And just yeah, like you're wearing pants. Oh fuck it, let's, <laughs> let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> hang out with you now pants and shoulder pads it's, look she's got chocolate cereal i'm gonna hang out with her see i've never gone to an like i, I don't have like i i have a fear of going to an air show of seeing like a tragedy oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've flown a plane though that's shut up i swear to god like they took off and you did the the flying afterwards yeah like i didn't take it off and land it yeah. or anything uh my my I, I guess you would call him like a great uncle uh-huh. um yeah he uh what, what he did was he would, they lived on this like private airport kind of like how uh Trade winds used oh, to be. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I'm sure they developed at the same rate, but like back then, it was you know trade winds was right, kind of just like right. a few dudes. Yeah, <clears throat> some old guys with oil money. And like uh, I actually fishing. drove a tractor too. Like he tricked me and like they're like you can drive a tractor. I just fucking <laughs> heck yeah. Tra- all I did was mow the runway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Do but, your uh, own job. Yeah. Uh, he took. He you only fit two people in this little plane. He'd build his own little planes, and they <laughs> even had like this like this uh like emergency cord. Like right here, that if you pulled it, what it would do is it break the wings off, and a in a giant parachute what? would come out, and the yeah, and like you and just of, the fuselage would land. Yeah, just you, you, you guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like pretty just, cool. Just like a little, like you and your chair, and like that's like some crop dust and plain shit. But uh, yeah, he took me up, dude, and like we're flying around, and he's kind of explaining to me whatever. I can't even see over the dash. <laughs> just, I'm, just yeah, looking at the I'm sky. probably like I'm probably like <laughs> nine or ten. And uh, it takes me up. I just explaining like, okay, so whenever this is like this, that's how you know you're flying in the right direction. Uh-huh. Like that's how you know you're stable. Right. You're right. not headed for the ground. And uh, I, I couldn't really reach the the, the rotors on the floor. Rudders, so he yeah. is rotors. It, is it what, what are they called? Rudders. Rudders. Whatever. Who yeah. gives a shit? I'm not a pilot. <laughs> me neither. But I know. <laughs> but I know parts. But you're old. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, again. Uh, yeah, rudders. And uh, but yeah, so he would work those. But yeah, I got to like literally like stable the plane. He like helped me turn and like. Did y'all do barrel rolls and shit? Like, no, dude, no, nothing right. like that. Uh, he quit flying planes though because he f- he uh, hit the side of a mountain. <laughs> that would stop you. <laughs> with his, but the, that is not what stopped him. It was it what stopped him was his wife was with him. Oh yeah. And like it's so now, apparently his hobby is Harley's. Which Hell are, yeah. Which are totally safer. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's not safer. <laughs> There's no mountains. There's, There's no- also I guess he's like I don't. There's no back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take this bitch with me no more. <laughs> Let me get a side cart and drop you off somewhere in New Mexico. <laughs> Go get your nails, dude. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but anyways, man, yeah. So the the traveling stuff was the hard part, but uh, like, man, it was so cool. Like, I've I met so many people. Like, I get uh, like just now, I got a message from somebody that's up in upstate New York that I hung out with at the bar there. It was like, hey, man. Doing a good job, blah blah blah. And Pretty these good. dudes still work for like the same company. Oh no, that's they they always change companies. Uh, the company that I worked with whenever I first started out, it's he went belly up. He took out a bunch of money. So the way it works is like AT and T gives a major contractor X amount of towers. So we'll just say a hundred towers. AT and T gives to this contractor. The contractor can do eighty of the jobs themselves with their own in house crews, but they still got these other twenty jobs that they gotta get done that they they contract. And that out. was they call you and that's and that's what they that's what we did. So how often I mean, was it like it's steady work? I mean Oh man. So let's see, I left oh, I wanna say it was around February two thousand thirteen and I would come home every six to eight weeks, usually eight weeks. Fuck. Uh, how do you and you're still paying rent here? Oh, no, dude. I, I got rid of my car after I left. Uh, probably about two months in, I, I got rid of my car. Uh, the guy that I was staying with uh, went and got all my shit out of his house. So, yeah, I I was just like, I just got rid of everything. I mean, you see what's in my house now. Like, I've had that. That's the same stuff that's been in storage since 2012, 2013, yeah, something you're, like that. You're, you're, I would <laughs> say you're a, a minimalist. Like, oh, you, yeah. You don't, man, you don't. I, I don't need a whole lot. I need a PlayStation and somewhere to lay my fat ass. And America loves me, man. I can't stop consuming. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> If I get a dollar, I'm spending it. I can't I help it. these cheeseburgers. But so it was cool, man. You know, every six to eight weeks I would go home. But I would, we solid worked. Uh, I mean, I changed companies three different times in that uh, little three-year stretch. And, I mean, I, the week that I would get home after about three or four days, I was just like, 
all right, well, I ain't making any money. I'm tired of spending money. I'm not making, so go back on the road. But, uh, man, that was definitely solid money by the end of it. So I started out as just a piece of shit, green, green hand, putting stuff together for the guys on the tower. Then I started climbing. I got a raise. Uh, after that, I started Boodoons. doing <laughs> 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 People would always ask me, like, what do you do for a living? And I said, oh, I climb cell phone towers. Like, how's that? And it was, oh, it's got its ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just always hit them and be yeah. like, oh, and then, oh man. Uh, and then I started doing uh, the power plant stuff. We, uh, I, I, me and two other guys would go and install uh, generators, electric generators on these cell phone sites. They were just yeah. like in the middle of nowhere, so that way the power went out. You know, main power, they'd have backup. And I did all of the wiring and stuff into the main power plants and shit, and I learned how to do all of that. So I got a $2 raise after that, and then I changed companies and got the opportunity to actually push a crew. I was actually running a, a four-man crew, me and three other guys. Uh, I did that for – so that company, it was – one company which ended up selling out to another one so that way they can make more money getting bigger contracts uh, just because of the guy's insurance policy. But anyway, uh, so I got to push a crew for about a year and a half, uh, three to four guys really depending on what we had going on. So, man, I, I went from making $12 an hour at Hooters to immediately $15 an hour starting out with these guys to within, uh, let's and say, you're eight months. You working mad hours. Oh, dude. Uh, we would, we would yeah, literally work from like seven until the, we couldn't see on the tower. We had headlamps we'd climb with, so that way we could stay working. Did uh, you, man, that's we would do like overnight cuts where like literally we couldn't work until after nine o'clock. So like the sun's down, everything we're doing is by headlights. We've got you know floodlights on the ground looking up at the tower, so that way everybody can see where they're hooking off and being sure everything's going on. I've done crane jobs. I've been on, I've been at the mercy of a crane operator three or four times. Uh, uh, the the scissor lifts, not really scissor lifts, but the one the boom. It's yeah. got the basket on the end of it the, with the wheels. Uh, I've ran two or three of those on jobs. Uh, it was really cool stuff, dude. So Have you thought about going back? I always think about going back, because just mostly because of the money. And, you know, like the dudes, like, I've, I fucking miss that camaraderie. You know, like, my brothers live in Lubbock. And See, we that, makes, that makes sense to me, that little bit, like the camaraderie. But, man, like, I am such a fan of my free time. I wouldn't be able to do this without it. I wouldn't oh, be able yeah, to do a podcast. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be sure. able to do stand-up. Uh, I mean, the main, like I said, but you're on the road all the time with that job. You can find yeah. open mics wherever you're at. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't even ever think about that. You know, I spent, uh, uh, what, two days sitting in Chicago waiting for a plane to take off where I could have gone and seen open mic or fucking actual shows or, oh, yeah. uh, man, I was what at one time I but was your first within, thoughts to just go to the bar. If you're hanging out, yeah, you just go to the bar, go, go get some drinks, eat something and go to fucking bed because I got to get up and do the shit again in the morning. Yeah. But don't, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of fun times. Like we would. We uh we found this waterfall one time that was just a little a little tiny hike when the guys got up on the top of a tower and was like holy shit a little river's over there and then another guy went and checked it out like holy fuck there's a fucking little waterfall over here so one weekend we all went out there and just hung out at the river you know right next to one of the sites we're working but up in Michigan I went to this uh, uh, amusement slash water park it was fucking cool have you ever been to a state that you just fucking hated like you just hated Wyoming you didn't like being there at all Wyoming because it's just like the Texas Panhandle except for it's cold as a motherfucker so it's just it's just so it's like Amarillo but yeah. just cold well, is, it, is, it, is it is it cold and windy though oh yeah it? no it's definitely cold and windy that's what I'm saying it's, 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 it's west Texas but cold uh, when it, the first time I ended up working there we were in Casper Wyoming uh <laughs> fucking yeah we've we've talked about Casper, yeah yeah the, the last one but, i think uh, too yeah but we're in casper and i working and it's still snowing like sideways snowing in this motherfucker it's and, sideways. <laughs> it, it was man and we're we're on this tiny little tower it's in a cul-de-sac at the end of this block and right underneath our tower is a police tr a police car like the guy lives there so you know there was definitely no smoking on that job yeah but uh you know you you got to worry about dropping tools and parts and stuff that could potentially hit this fucking cop car and shit like that so it just that part sucked but it's snowing sideways and we're on a monopole and I'm, I'm sure if you saw one you'd be like oh that's a monopole it's just the single metal pole it looks like you know but this thing's got uh it's got one two three sets of booms on it plus all the lines and stuff and then like we're having to climb over stuff around stuff to get up on it and it's snowing sideways and i'm freaking the fuck out and this is the first time we're getting on this tower and we have to come off of our safety climb, which is the one that's on our our, our chest the, the, on our chest on the harness to our Y lanyard, so that way I can come off of this cable and get over some stuff and then get back onto it. And this is the first time I've climbed in snow, and I'm you know everything's a little slick, and my fucking gloves are wet and soaked and cold, and I'm like I'm freaking the fuck out, like I don't want to fucking do this job, Joe. He's like, well, but if you don't, you're just gonna have to go home. And I was like, I'll go sit in a hotel. And he's like, No, I'm Marillo, you motherfucker, get your fat ass up there. And 
finally after about 20 minutes sitting there looking at it i was like okay this is how you okay this is how i do it and finally got up there and it's snowing sideways and then about 20 minutes into it he's like all right i can't test shit in the snow let's go back to the hotel oh, you're, like, you're up there like Fuck you. <laughs> yeah dude it was, and it was always something like that i mean it was it was fun fucking work sometimes there was a lot of bullshit because there's a lot of downtime too you know like most of the stuff we were doing was antenna swap outs and shit so you know the we would take an antenna unhook everything off the antenna and send it to the ground well to get the uh, the new antenna up it's it's going to take a second you know even even somebody pulling it by hand we had uh, uh cat heads that did all the work for us like they have on boats you know to, to pull the sails yeah. and shit so we've got an electric version of that and you know it still takes you know five ten minutes for this antenna to get 300 foot in there so you're literally just sitting there smoking cigarettes hanging out in the air you know there's other stuff to be doing but you know, most of the time you're just a lot of waiting and sitting so it's not like we were ever doing really ever physical work or like it wasn't See, it wasn't that, like boom, 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 it, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, in my in my head, it seems very like I don't know why. It seems like it'd be like a really hard job, like physically. Oh, but uh, I have friends that work on those wind turbines. Oh yeah, and fuck yeah, those dude, guys are ballsy too. Because I was a lot riding of power running like, through those. You no, know, we were driving, dude. We were driving by the train. Me and Jay we were going to go grab some food, and we ended up going underneath like the tr- uh, train tracks. Mm-hmm. And they had those. They had the blades. On oh the, yeah, on these trains. Dude, the Fucking huge! Uh, I, I want to say they're 100 and 120 foot or something. They're like that. so fucking big, <laughs> dude. I don't know. I don't know the measurements on those things, but I think most of them are about 300 foot. So the top of those things is about where the, those big nacelles are. That's about our major, our uh, where our most of our work was done. So really cool stuff, man. I just miss the dudes. That's really all it is. Like I got a bunch of guys in Houston. I still go visit every once in a while and go hang out. And I'm friends with this dude on Instagram and, and Facebook. I've known him for a long time, uh, but he always posts pictures of him on top of the wind turbines. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it looks cool. Yeah, that's looks the stuff cool. I miss too. Just hanging out, like, oh my god, like I got to see uh, what was it, Lake Erie on top of a tower, three hundred foot in the air. Uh, Margaretville, New York. That's probably one of the most memorable sites because we built that one from the ground up. There was already a tower, but we put the shel- the shelter there. We did everything on the tower for AT and T. We did all of the inside of the shelter. We did. I dug trenches with a hand with a pickaxe in the middle of the mountains, but uh, yeah, we did that job, man. It's I just miss it, dude. Like that's like just thinking about the memories and all the bullshit. But like the it was just sucky, fucking sucky work. You're just gone all the time. And, yeah. And if you know if it rains, you don't work, which means you don't make money, which means you're still spending money on the hotel and your food and shit that you got to use. Yeah, they give you per diem and stuff, but you know that's just code word for beer money and pussy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know. <laughs> but uh, it was man. It's, don't get me wrong. It's totally cool stuff. It's just code word, man. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody knew it. It's, Everyone knew it's it. It's free beer and stripper money. That's all that stuff is. Hell yeah, dude. Really cool stuff. I miss those dudes, but... Uh, we may have... I may have asked you this already. Have you ever been deep sea fishing? No. The... Uh, man, I don't I don't really fish. It's... I, I, I do more drinking than fishing, but the last time I think I, think I went fishing, we were just doing some jig... Jug, jug, j- jigging? Jug jigging? We, we were out in East Texas and I, literally I've, threw... I've literally it. only been to a lake. Like, I've only done... Like, yeah. I haven't done that shit in years. I like, did... I, uh, I went to the coast uh, for spring break the other day and found a, a hermit crab, a real live hermit crab in the sea. That's about the fishing I do. See, I was trying to explain to I think Brett the other day. I was like, dude, I when I was like, like I don't have like everyone remembers like oh I love the Goonies. They they all they have all these movies from their childhood. Uh-huh. We didn't do that. I didn't watch movies, man. Like y'all uh, did stuff. We yeah. We like dude. When I was growing up, it was if like at night I was until dark i was out riding my bike sure sure and doing that and then on the weekends we were either at the lake or the river yeah see, those, riding dirt bikes or dirt bikes yeah dirt dude bike. hitting the dirt bikes or fucking uh tubing man you know and then uh there was multiple times that i i missed monday <laughs> you know what i mean because we stayed an extra day yeah. like they we I did, we I did baseball games and shit like that and, and then if i was weekend. watching anything it was like i said it's like nine o'clock at night yeah. so i remember the first day we got cable first time uh it may have been, been satellite but uh I stayed up and watched Space Baller. Ghost Coast to Coast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was the first, like, like I didn't even know anything like that existed. And uh-huh. then I had a TV in my room, but it was pretty much, it never, like, I might play Local Sega channels. once a oh, day. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then, no, we had, a, I had, I had, I could watch South Park, I had Comedy Central. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. But I just never turned it on. Like, I would listen to music. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, like. See, I didn't get my first TV in the room until I was probably 17, 18. I was in high school. I had a radio the whole time. My fat little brother got to, he got the it, TV. Dude, it was one of those knobs. Do, do. Oh yeah, my yeah. my first TV was like it was a four inch screen with like a three foot black back on it that I could it had one earpiece I could lay in bed and watch it. My, on my mom chest. still has the TV uh, that made me believe in Santa for way too long. <laughs> for real, <laughs> she still has that Santa's shit. Santa's real, dude. Cause I was in Colorado, dog. I was in Colorado, 
and for Christmas. And then I came home, and in my bedroom, Santa had left me a TV, a fucking Xbox or some shit, like a bunch of dope stuff, right? And so I was at school, like when people were like, "He ain't real." I was like, "Dog, I'm telling you, he's fucking real." I, they're like my mom told me, like, "Your mom's a bitch and lying." Bro, you're too. 16. Santa's not they're real. Like, they're like, they, it was the, they're like, they told me today at work. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> uh, no I, I believed until I was like probably like 11. Dude. That's so cool. I mean, I don't, I don't want kids of my own. This is own. how I found out. My my cousin finally one day was like, "Dude, me and my mom have a key to your house. We I I put that there." Aww. And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> I've been arguing Dream with kids crush. at school. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just I'm kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I was just joking. They're like, I'm "Did you cry?" Nobody. Dude, you cried. <laughs> Where's Tony Bennett? You Cox out here, man. So uh, this podcast thing's doing pretty good, man. You've had what? How many episodes have you done so far? This will be like 41, maybe 41 or 42. Nice, just pumping yeah. them numbers up. I like it. <laughs> it's been fun, dude. Like, and I really. I should do – I'm trying to get to where I'm doing it more often, man. Uh, I get into I mean, it is called the weekly relapse. And I, I want to do it more than once a week, though, uh-huh. because uh, if I don't do it more than once a week, I don't do it at all. Right. Um, Just like jerking off. Well, I hit this – I hit these weird – like – if like PUBG, man. Okay, like the first reason I took a break was uh, Rocket League. It's video yeah. games, man. They're, they're <laughs> fucking dangerous. And you've got a TV. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I gotta get rid of some of them. Like, it's too. No. Too. I, no. I don't want to, but it's too fucking much, man. No, you just gotta. It's it's all about self control. Like, all right, I'm gonna buy one game a month for this console. One well, game see, a that, month for this that's console. That's still too. Because I don't I don't like video games that way. Like I like <laughs> I have people who play all the game. Like they're like, dude, I played God of War. I played yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I played that. Fucking, I like weird, like, I find games that I like, and then I play the shit out of them. Like Hashtag Rocket League. Rocket League, uh, GTA was a motherfucker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I wasn't a comic yet. <laughs> I wouldn't have got nothing. I would Nothing would have been done, dude. I wouldn't have been doing shows. I wouldn't have. Telling jokes that, about the characters on Grand Theft Auto. I ha- yeah, I, I've had it for PS3 and PS4 and Xbox One. I bought it for, like, every console. Cause I can't stop playing. I, it, <laughs> I, I, I refuse to delete it off it, of my. Playing it different ways on each console, so you can see the way the story progresses and shit. I, I've already done all that. <laughs> <There's> no, <laughs> there was a point where my PS3 would just reset itself, like it would, uh, it would freeze, and the only way to fix it was you had to hard reset it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would lose like once a week. I would lose my, and like I'd get really upset, but then I would just turn it back on and start playing. Yeah, no, like, like, there was no, happened. and yeah. just start, and I wouldn't even do I it online. Keep going. I wouldn't even play it online then. I, I never really played the Grand Theft Auto Five online. Maybe I think I joined. A little bit. I joined too late, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I joined whenever everybody had millions and millions and millions of dollars and dropping airplanes and helicopters and shit. Well, yeah, and then they ruined the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. With online, um, when I joined, it was awesome. It was perfect. Like the bunkers hadn't happened yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one had like, you could buy planes and stuff. But they were expensive, and yeah. it was kind of just like I can it was doing I missions. Go, that was I the cool part about it. Was it was like that. I can just missions. go steal some shit. Yeah. And if I want a plane, I'll go fucking steal a plane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rob this bank real quick. Yeah, but now, man, you hop on. Everyone's got like I. I hopped on when there was this biker club thing, which couldn't have happened with a better timing. My girlfriend loves Sons of Anarchy, so yeah. we have to watch it every now and then. Oh yeah. And we had just we were like season three or four. Like we've been watching for the last couple weeks, Plugging like through, last yeah. week or two. And I uh, decided to hop on GTA, update it, hop on, and they have this fucking biker club <laughs> thing. And I was like about <laughs> it. Dude. That like that like that was, a, that was another reason why I didn't do podcasts for a while. Like just GTA and oh, yeah. PUBG every, is the new one. Every I time I watch Sons of Anarchy, I always want to buy a motorcycle, and then I'm like, yeah, whatever. But I did find a scooter. I think I'm gonna get I'm totally gonna get that scooter. I talked to my dad about it. He told me I was a fucking idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he had a motorcycle whenever he was young and stupid too. But he laid it up underneath a, a semi. And I'm like, Dad, no, this thing is for on the weekends whenever I'm going or during, you know, going to work and shit. Just me on the side of the streets. I ain't, I ain't trying to get, you know, I ain't, I'm not that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna try to race nobody. <laughs> Dude, did were you able to get any of those guys from uh, what was it, Illinois or whatever that were here last time to do a podcast like you did with Mo? No, no, I did not. Those guys were hilarious too. Yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited about all the comics that have been coming through Amarillo. I'm trying Hell to book yeah. Mo again and. It kind of sucked, man. I asked the the Lubbock Comedian Union group thing that we're in. I was like, hey, can one of you guys help me? Because Mo, Mo Alexander wants to come back, but he wants to do Lubbock. Yeah. Is it be him, uh, Mo, Charlie, and me again? He was like, dude, I want let's fucking do it up. Uh-huh. And uh, 
asked for help. Nobody nobody got back to me, man. Uh, I was gonna, so I'm just gonna hit up Bax or whatever that venue that just closed. Charlie Bees. If they if they reopened, because apparently that was like the they had the badass stage. Yeah. So I'll, well, I gotta be careful, man. I can't book them on a like. I felt bad that that stage oh, was so yeah, tall yeah. last time. Well, he just had that possum injury too, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed about that for a good few days. Dude, it, it I like whenever a comic writes a joke that really fucking sticks with you, like yeah. one that you can't stop thinking about. Like you think about it, like you'll be in the car just driving, and all of a sudden it's like, and you get, oh, you got a possum injury. Oh. Yeah, dude, you just think about it. Like yeah. uh, for me, it's the uh, Jay Larson wrong the wrong number bit. Uh, it's have I not shown it to you? I'm, I'm sure I've heard it. Uh, like he's all he's all he talks about how the phone rings it's like it's a new york number uh-huh. he's like you know he's like i know the area code he's like i answer it and they're like he's like what do you do if, you know what do you guys do and they're like ignoring he's like yeah not me i see opportunity right is this the one where he's talking about he's on the conference call or whatever later? yeah oh, okay yeah, yeah. Dude, that <laughs> that bit alone. how's the numbers yeah, yeah. he's like what's, how's the budget yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> mine uh mine are uh I, I i think about uh matt's uh retweets all the time the, JFK yeah. And <laughs> See, I think about that one a lot. And then uh, Austin Eulin has this one where he uh, reads book titles uh-huh. that he had, like you know, like uh, I I can't even name one for some like like he has like he'll like say like something really fucked up, <laughs> and then the author is, and then he does like the author. <laughs> it's actually it's very similar like the setup punch style, but like they're both beautifully beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, like the, the tweets, man. Like the one where he's like. I wish someone would shoot me in the head. He's all, oh, yeah. Hey, he's this, all, this place sucks. I wish somebody would shoot me. In the this, head. Yeah, this place is terrible. I wish somebody would just shoot me in the head. It's like Abraham Lincoln retweeted by John Wilkes Booth. That is some of the funniest mine, shit. Mine man. is the uh, uh, JFK pulled up to the <laughs> – pulled up with my ceiling missing. Oh, yeah, pulled up with my ceiling missing. <laughs> pulled up to the ceiling with my ceiling missing, yeah. JFK. Yeah, too soon, but, man, that's a fucking fantastic and then he did, And then he's uh, he does the one with, like, Robert Kennedy, and he's like, he wasn't a president, but <laughs> – it's funny because he died. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be just like my brother. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, his Morgan Freeman impersonation is really funny. I don't guess I've heard him. Oh, uh, it'd be like, yeah, he can nail it. He can. I can't do Morgan Freeman. Like, uh, you Did know who you does know. Like a, uh, that David guy? Uh, the the com- big dude? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He came on. He can do fucking impersonations like yeah. a motherfucker. He's really good. I like the guy. We did that uh, that battle with Loic and we – Got that five dollars for the show, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I paid the comedian, I made it!" <laughs> you yeah, know, dude. Uh, and he was like, "Man, I'm about to go get me some Subway sandwich with this." And I was like, "God damn, dude, we are struggling comedians. <laughs> I, I got to do the show so I can eat dinner tonight." I was like, "Man, I'm living the life. I'm living the life." <laughs> That's what's funny is uh, I've never once like, and I like, I, I people were like, "You need to, you should care a little bit about the money." Uh-huh. I don't give a shit about it. Yeah, I like I, jokes. Yeah, I just want to get there. I want to get stage time. I want to do well. And then after all that, if they want to give me money, that's cool too. I mean, I take dr- free drinks as well. Oh, well, I would love a tab. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. cause if you're not paying me, at least give me a tab because that's going to at least save. Like, I'm not spending money. Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't want to put a show together and then end up day. having to like dump money on mm-hmm. top of it. Drive all day, spend gas money, pay for a hotel, and then to have to pay for my well on the road on the road is a different story yeah but like here in amarillo like if i do a show i really if i set it up i'd like if i'm not making it because like a lot of time in these comics the the bigger names like mo and stuff yeah i don't take a cut yeah i just give i give them all the money because they're on the road you know what i mean like i'm gonna go to work tomorrow (laughs) yeah yeah like so they've still got to drive fucking two days and they gotta eat they gotta get a hotel they gotta you know what i mean they gotta find a fucking pot dealer wherever (laughs) they go yeah it's it's work man it's a lot of work that was a th- that was also one of the fun parts about being on the road was always trying to find a pot dealer. Is that fun though? Hell yes, fuck yeah! It you is, just dude. meet new people all the time. Yeah, so man, if there if there was a Hooters in town, wherever we were, we would start at Hooters just because I worked at Hooters and I could you know I knew the lingo and I knew how to talk to them the restaurant in, and then yeah, like, let me get this blah 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 this way half this way blah blah get everything tell them how and then it'd be like yo you want to get some food uh, you know yeah. so it was I never really had a problem with it but one of the guys that was Smoky I mean he. He'd walk into the bar and just be like, where do we eat at? And <laughs> like, he didn't give a shit. We were in Colorado, January 14th, 2014, whenever marijuana went recreational legal. Oh, Our, enti- our entire crew shut down. Like, oh, for real? Yeah, Joe was calling us on the phone like, where the fuck are you motherfuckers at in our company trucks? Like, 
Joe, we need the day off, bro. We got stuff going on. Like, we fucking rioted anarchy. We're like, fuck you, I ain't going to work. We're all standing in line, like, waiting on the school line, fucking for lunch. Like, come on, when's this bitch going to open? Like, like a kid waiting for Deadpool 2, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're all standing there, and then the next day at work, you know, we all show up, and everybody's got these fucking vape pens. Like, oh, Joe, just it's going to be better for us on the tower. We're not going to be smoking so many cigarettes. You know, everybody's fucking getting high as a bitch on the, on the job site. These, we're, we are totally safe whenever we do these jobs. Don't get it incorrect, but mar- <laughs> marijuana makes everything easier. So, but yeah, it, it makes was you fun. like what like Joe Rogan said it best. He's like he's like they say you shouldn't smoke weed. He's like don't smoke your weed like around your kids. But he's like it's I think it's okay to be high around your yeah. kids. He's like what when I'm high I'm gonna be more worried about corners and a lot more fun to hang out with. <laughs> really interested in what she's saying. Like are you like 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 I'm just really <laughs> into conversations like, with this baby? Yeah, shit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it, don't you? You've got a joke like that, right? With some, I'm sh- weed. I have so many jokes about smoking weed. It happens. It sucks though, because like I don't want it to be my shtick where I'm all like all my jokes talk about. But I write about what I yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. And most of the time, whenever something funny happens, I had just got done smoking. <laughs> there was weed involved. Yeah, and like that's that's what's so fucking crazy, dude. Like that, it's like it's legal, man. There's, it should be. It's, it's yeah. it, there's places that it's legal. It's like if booze was illegal in Texas, but only le- people would fucking riot. Yeah, they, there would be people driving. They in would from burn Oklahoma the U.S. Booze. to the to the fucking ground. <laughs> like, I mean, don't people from Oklahoma still drive to Texas for for good? Beer? I guess because it's better. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand. Like, was, laws are so weird, man. <laughs> Stupid laws. <laughs> I just don't get. It. Some of them are weird. You have to say that. You have to be able to step back and go. So it's illegal to smoke marijuana in three quarters of the country, but it's still legal to fuck sheep in thirteen states. How well, is that? And like, I guess, I guess I can understand it from the point of view of like, let's make it medical, and then, but then like the next step is all like, when, no one's satisfied with medical. You know what I mean? Like they get it goes medical. Then people are like, all right, cool. Mm. Now it's time to go recreate. Like now, now we start the recreation push. The, I think it's mostly because the medical part of it is so hard. What's like, so scary about it? What's so scary about making weed legal? That's what I don't understand. Like why? Like it seems like they're the fucking, fucking scared the Rothschilds to do it. and all those cocksuckers with old money. New York won't make anything off of it because anybody can do it themselves. That's that's it, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's because you can just, grow it. Just like these dudes. They're the reason fucking cigarettes are still... Can speakers. you grow a tobacco plant? You can damn sure grow tobacco. Like you legally? Fuck yeah. See, why can't I grow a weed plant? Well, because it makes you laugh and hungry and happy and want to play with your dogs instead of yell at them and fucking kick them. <laughs> <laughs> they would, we, this country would rather have people to kick their dogs than be happy and throw the ball. What's crazy, dude, is like... Restaurants are like, we don't over-serve. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. How That's the fuck do you think I'm going to make fucking $150 tonight? Yeah, bullshit. Oh, we don't over-serve. Yes, you do. And you do it on purpose. You sure you don't want one more? Uh, <laughs> what? Fuck you, you don't over-serve. And then it's way more expensive. It's terrible for you. And then on top of that, like, I might get hungry whenever, like, if I smoke a joint, I might get hungry. I'm going to go eat pineapple and watermelon. It's yeah. pretty, and it tastes good, yeah. and it's going to keep my cotton mouth back. Yeah. Whenever I'm fucking drunk, I'm going to Wendy's or Whataburger. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get – I'm going to order way more food than I need Eating to order. 14 taquitos. It's just like – it's like they just want your money, dude. They just, you're just dumping money into – like, alcohol, like, funds. Whataburger would not exist if alcohol was illegal. Whoa. Waterburger is actually decent. It's good. It's yeah. good. It's very good. But like, best I fries in town. I go there during the day. There's people. Sure, there's a few. Go oh. there at night, dog. There's thousands of people. <laughs> there's there's two hundred thousand people waiting in line yeah. at Waterburger. Yeah, let me get fourteen taquitos, one one bacon, and all. You potato. would think it's like like Gordon Ramsay's moonlighting <laughs> at this fucking place. Like, there's so many people there. Have you had their taquitos? That's so delicious. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. I saw this meme the other day. It said uh, it, it had one of the table tents, the numbers from Whataburger. It said, uh, why do Texas people steal the table tents from Whataburger? It's, we don't know. It's just a Texas thing. Like <laughs> I had so many of those in high school. They were just all over my room. My dad's like, why the fuck do you even have uh, these? Like, I don't know, Dad. I, mean, I used to steal uh, like the trays, you know, I used the, to like steal KFC a, and shit. I used to steal those. Uh, I liked them for swag. Mm-hmm. You yeah, you turn them hose up and you shake, shake the seeds it. out. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Yeah, and, then, uh, and then we would write them. <laughs> down the, uh, the sli- on no, the, the slides and shit. We do that, but the full pipe at the at skate park, 
Oh, yeah. You get on the very top of that, and you could sit on it and ride it like a sled down into the street side. So you, oh, you're not dropping yeah. in the bowl, but you're just going from the top to the bottom. Yeah, I like, got you. My buddy was trying to – I was on the news because we were the only two out there. Like, I'm sure they would have much rather had somebody else who was better right, at skateboarding yeah. on there. Uh, but, yeah, they were coming out because it just opened. Two local punks. <laughs> and I'm out there skating, and Brandon doesn't skate. So uh, they're, like, interviewing me, and he's in the background, and he keeps running up, getting on the tray and sliding down. <laughs> he's doing everything he can to try to, like – Get a shot. Let me get these backgrounds. Just, yeah, just just part of them in there riding the purple Taco Bell tray, yeah. dude. Yeah, I don't, why we I don't know why we would do that. I don't know why. Like, I don't know what it is about being a teenager and just wanting to steal shit. Because uh, we were defying the law. I guess. Defying I stole – one time we, we stole too many Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> like, way too many. Like, we stole – Pogs in my day. You remember Pogs? Yeah. Yeah, well, we stole Pogs. Spencer's Gifts – Mm. Had this is like fifteen years ago. Yeah. <laughs> had uh they I guess they I feel like they accidentally ordered Japanese cards because they had packs of Japanese cards uh-huh. in the uh, on this like rack just sitting in the middle of the store. And I'm not gonna say who because I'm sure you wouldn't like me to out them. <laughs> we uh, statue of limitations. You're good. W- yeah, we fucking went through and we stole every pack they had on there. It was like fifty of them. Did you get some good Th- cards? Throughout the day. We don't they're in Japanese. Like we only could recognize <laughs> some of them. You know what I mean? The artwork's a little different. Yeah, yeah. Like can't read none of it. That's it was like, the dumbest thing. There was like, no Google Translate. Yeah. And then uh Oh yeah, that was crazy, dude. I don't know. We were we were so stupid. Like after that, uh we wanted we wanted to get some English cards, so we went to K B Toys. <laughs> the fucking lady had gone just walked to the back, so the guy I was with, I almost said his name. <laughs> the guy I was with, like, leans over the counter and grabs like a starter deck, and then takes off. And this lady starts yelling, but she's she can only speak Spanish, <laughs> and so uh, she she's trying to tell the lady that. And I'm so glad I stuck around, by the way, because I was gonna just bounce with him. Yeah. And I was like, maybe she doesn't know we're together, and uh, she's trying to tell the lady that. Ooh, so hard not to say his name. I uh, tried to tell the lady that that dude that I was with had taken the cards and took off running right. and uh, that I was with him. And so she's yelling in Spanish and pointing at me. And then the lady's like, what's going on? And I was like, dude, this kid just ran in <laughs> and <laughs> stole some cards. Let's see if I can catch him. And I just took off running. See if I, I'll go see if I got it. Yeah. I'll get him back for and you. Then, uh, and then we, so we're just sitting outside. Like, we're scared. We've called our ride. We're not even old enough to drive at this point. Uh, call our ride, and we're just like, you got to come get us now. Like, you got Like, we're bored. <laughs> you got to come get us now, man. We're bored. And uh, it took forever. So we're, we're, we're not going in the mall now. We're just sitting outside. And a mall security guard, like, pulls up, gets out of his car. He's like, are you two? Are y'all the ones? And we're like, what? He's like, and we're looking at what cards. Ones? Like, we're, lo- <laughs> we're like, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Going through the evidence. Yeah. And uh, we're like, what are you talking about? And he's like, are y'all the one that rang the doorbell over here <laughs> at this loading dock? And we're like, no. <laughs> he's like, all right. And he left. <laughs> and then our, our ride showed up, and we left. Shit We'd on be- yourself. <laughs> yeah. That was like, I didn't go back to the mall for like a year. I was, <laughs> I was so scared. But like, I, I can't, like, I'll never forget that, that moment the lady was pointing at me. And I just realized I had the advantage. <laughs> like, like, I could just say whatever. And she, there's no way she could fucking fact oh, check she's me. Say, she's saying he's ready to check out. I speak good Spanish. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, I saw it. Like, I was like, this kid. And I, like, I, you know, I painted the wrong picture. I'm like, because I was like, this little white kid. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I just tried everything I can. Like, but I'll never forget the moment. They're just going like, oh, shit. Yeah, I could probably get out of this. Not just – not like – because if I just would have ran, we would have got caught. Oh, there's, yeah. There's no, she, they they would have sent security and all this other stuff. And, you know, they had to go check the footage, and then she saw that I walked in there. But by the time we were already out of there, like it's just – Nah, fuck it. They're gone. Maybe. Maybe. It was a long time ago. You get busted ringing a doorbell you didn't even touch. Man, that's fucked up. Fired in jail. Yeah, there's – yeah, that was that – was, that, was, that was nuts. That was a crazy day. I can't really think – the first time I ever got busted for stealing, I was – Probably like seven or eight. You remember snap bracelets? Yeah. Well, these things at first, they just came out. And I can't remember which. It was like one of the cereal companies was doing Ninja Turtle Bowls that they saran wrapped to the cereals. So uh, we're at the grocery store. We're picking out our cereal. I was trying to get all of the Ninja Turtles, as anyone else would. And it was Raphael. And I kind of slit the, the plastic and gotten a snap bracelet and slid it in there and broke it so that way it would curl up inside the bowl. Yeah. How old so were you? 
Seven or eight. That's smart. I'm a fucking asshole. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Most I people go around the ankle. Yeah. 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 Oh, damn. I never thought about that. Over. So I'm thinking I can't wear this thing out. So I'm like, all right, snap it into the into the turtle bowl. So I get to the house and sh- sh- snap, check it out. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even remember what it was, man. It, like a, it looked like a football or something. I don't know. So uh, me and my brother were there, and he got the same Ninja Turtle bowl and same cereal, but no snap no bracelet. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. It was just in there. It was just in there. And uh, she she took me. It was my dad's ex wife. She took me back to the store. It was United in Lubbock, and made me tell the manager that I stole the bracelet. And I had to sit in the office. And she left. And like I thought I was going to jail. The security guard came in, and he was standing there, all security guardy. And I, and I was freaking the fuck out. What's mean is these adults were like, "Let's fuck with this." Yeah, kid, and dude. that's really all it was. Like he told on himself. So like here, sorry about this. So but just scare him, you know? Yeah, uh, dude. I remember one time I. Once again, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> so Dude, uh, lame. We're, so lame. we're at uh, Target, and I'm with my stepdad, and he's batshit crazy, right? But he was cool sometimes, but not really, not really ever. <laughs> so, like, maybe once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, me and the same kid almost said his fucking name again. <laughs> uh, we pocket. This one wasn't that bad. Like, we got, like, a booster pack. We'd run to the bathroom, open it, right? I got a secret rare. I'll never do it. Yeah. Was, like, this dragon. It was badass. <laughs> And uh, so we were like, all right, got to get one more pack. So we go and we put, I, I think I put like three packs in my pocket, right? Mm-hmm. And then we're leaving. And I, I guess I was just giving off the I just vibe that like, I stole because yeah. my stepdad was like, like I, I don't know. I don't remember how he got there, but he's like, did you steal something? <laughs> and he reached over and taps my pocket right on the cards, yeah. dude. And I was like, no. And he's like, I'm about to say. <laughs> and that was it. Like, it just, <laughs> <laughs> I just lied. <laughs> No, but, uh, dude. One time I got caught lying, uh, and this is all it was. Like the teacher said I did something. I said that I didn't do it, and he's like, "Are you calling the teacher a liar?" I was like, "I guess," because I I didn't do it. And there was no, there was no, like no jury or trial or mm-hmm. let's let's go find out who's telling the truth. Right. He's like, "So you calling the teacher a liar?" That means you're a liar. He made me go door to door on my street and tell every person that I was a liar. Wow. Yeah, he was crazy, dude. Man. That man, so my dad. That's he, borderline child abuse nowadays. <laughs> no, you want to hear child abuse? You put that on the you. internet, dude. You put that on the internet. That's the next Can- Casey Anthony trial. Yeah, yeah. Except for she won't get off somehow. <laughs> Casey Anthony could murder her trial, yeah. and then we set her free to the world. So we lived about, I want to say like two and a half, maybe three blocks away from my elementary school. I'm in second grade. My brother's just started school. He's in kindergarten, but he's only going half a day. Uh, so I asked my dad. I've got friends that you know live on the block or whatever. Like, Dad, let me walk to school with these guys. Let me walk home. Uh, and he's like, no. He said, come on, Dad, let me walk home with these guys. I'm big enough, you know. So uh, he's like, okay, well, uh, what are you going to do if somebody tries to steal you? I was like, I'll punch him in the balls and leave, you know, trying to be real smart and big about it. So he's like, okay, let's do this. He's like, I want you to turn around, and I want you to reach out and grab that door handle. We're standing in the living room, and he's pointing at the front door. He says, I want you to reach out and grab that front door handle. Well, all right. I turn around, and just about the time I get to touch that door, my dad snatches me up by the throat, choking the shit out of me, like doing it, like, Bruh! He's like, you're coming with me, motherfucker, and drags me off. And he's like, what are you going to do if somebody else does that? I'm just joking with you to show you something, but what are you going to do when somebody really does that? And you can't punch him in the balls. I was like, I don't want to walk to school, Dad. <laughs> Four years later, when my brother, well, no, two years later, my brother's in second grade. He wakes up at about, I don't know, 6 o'clock in the morning, definitely two hours before we're supposed to even be close to school. Gets up, puts his clothes on, walks to school still dark outside, to our janitor. Our janitor, this coolest dude, old Mexican dude, he used to ever let all the kids play with it. He had the key, big keychain on the fucking, you know, it's, he, we'd spin it out, you know. Really. He, yeah. let it, he let everybody play with it. I wish I could remember his name. But anyway, so my brother goes to school early to help the janitor do the trash. He's just hanging out with the janitor, picking up trash. You know, we're freaking the fuck out. Like, oh, my God, where's Anthony at? You know, we can't find him. His bed's – well, we never made beds. I can't say that we made, his, made beds. His but, bed's not made. But, but his stuff's gone. You know, he's yeah. got his backpack. All of his shit's gone go up to the school sure enough he's there with uh with the janitor he's like yeah i don't, I don't know he just showed up and was like hey um, they dropped me off early so i'm just gonna hang out so <laughs> nothing happens to him nothing happens to him but i want to walk to school and i get fucking <laughs> i get choked the fuck out like i'm in the, in the cage with chuck liddell i told this story on the last <laughs> podcast so i'm not gonna go too deep but yeah one time my mom forced me and my friends to watch a kidnapping documentary because she was like you need to be worried about this like this is a real thing wow. And then all I want to do is go to the store. I just want to ride my bike to the store. Mm. And so after it's done, it's probably like 5, 6 in the, in the evening. Uh-huh. Uh, she was like, all right, you guys can go now. Just remember. And then like, no bullshit, dude. This guy was trying to lure me into his car. Like, And like I yelled, he's trying to kidnap me. <laughs> Ran to the Shal- like rode my bike to Shalotsky's, called the police. They fucking found him. And they were like, this is like the fourth call we've had today. Holy like, shit. Like he's been going from like convenience store to convenience store. 
Oh my god! And I was like, how ironic. Yeah, I know. is your mom that, psychic? Uh, yeah, I kind of think so, dude. It's like, like you know when you, moms say, like, I have eyes in the back of my head. Oh yeah. Like I believed that shit for <laughs> so long. Have you heard the John Mulaney? Did you ever look for him? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I remember like Move moving her hair, dude. Shit, yeah. Like, where the fuck are they? <laughs> Get out of the cabinet. Well, how do you? What are you talking about? But what John Mulaney <laughs> bit? Uh, he's oh, so he, what was it? So he's. He's fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. He's, I think it was John Mulaney's. He he gets to join the uh, the the cross guard patrol or whatever, and so he gets a sash or whatever, and he's with the sixth grade teacher, and she tells him, "Okay, uh, you go to the the southwest corner to this," co-, and then he, "Yes, sir," and he takes off, and he 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 gets outside, and he's like, "Where is Southwest?" You know, he's like, "I'm fucking seven years old. I don't know my directions." <laughs> he's like, "So I but I try to make it look important, so I'm standing on a corner, and the teacher comes out." And she starts yelling at me, what are you, an idiot? And about that time, my mom's coming up, and she's got to drop some paperwork that I forgot off for some field trip or something. And she sees this, and she comes over, and she says, wow, you're really tearing into that kid bad. So he must have done something real bad. And she goes, the teacher says, this, I just don't understand. Some kids' parents just don't care. And he said, my mom. He said, I saw it, like, change across her face. She went from sweet mom dropping off paperwork to, I'm going to cut your head off, bitch. He <laughs> <laughs> said, well, that is my son, and let me tell you something. If I ever hear of you talking to my son or any other kid like that, I'm going to burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> and so later on, his mom picks him up from school, and he's like, Mom, how did you know that? He's like, "Mom, <laughs> moms know everything about their kids. <laughs> and he says, so I get into high school, and these kids are messing with me at lunchtime, and they start to punch me, and <laughs> I'm screaming, where's my mom? <laughs> Where's my mom? <laughs> and she, he said, and then I got home and my, and my mom asked me, she, he said, so how was it? And he says, where the fuck were you? <laughs> it's pretty good. I don't know if it's John uh, but it is a good bit. Yeah, nonetheless. that's super funny, man. <coughs> I don't know. Good stuff. Good stuff. Man, how long is this? We're doing a great job. Yeah, we're already in an hour. You want to listen to some Ali Tamanik? Yeah, do it. All right, Ali this Tamanique. is uh, Ali Tamanik. Go find his YouTube channel. Ew. But uh, this is the song. Is, it's titled Jaden Smith Icon. Is that what it says? Jaden Smith Icon. Icon. Ali yeah, Tamanik Remix. It's the Ali Tamanik Remix, which I, I will be 100%. I've never heard the original, so this is going to se- seem like th- his song to me. <laughs> I mean, as long as you get rid of those stupid dr- shit locks on his head, I will back up Jaden Smith. Average temperature, 31 Sweet. degrees Celsius. 31 Mission, spot. investigate and deliver. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's some fly-ass Whoa. shoes for sure. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. What you call an icon living? I've been an icon. Tell me why y'all Damn. slipping. Whoa. Yikes got their minds all tripping. Now they grab their iPhone yelling, I want a picture. Whoa. Whoa. But I'm not a role model. I'm a villain because I got a whole lot of trouble that I'm about to get in. Really got to slow down. I'm on a road and I'm doing shows, the souls. I'm going to probably get up in a prison. Whoa. Swear I got my life for William. I'm a prince. Check the name that I got given. Probably why they call the kids sire. I don't get tired, man. I inspire while I'm building up an empire. Whoa. Put that on my squad. I'm a general. Whoa. Seven gears in my lab mixing chemicals. Whoa. I found a formula Can that I've been looking having for. To do with- Music video at a desert. I predicted this. I had the premonition. Mm. Y'all still catching up to what the kid envision. Mm. Y'all don't really understand the bigger picture. How you iconic when you don't even know the and definition. Oh, my daddy picked me up when I was little. Told me in order to win it, I gotta be independent. Like whoa, now I'm making movies independent. Woo. Making moves just like an eviction. Woo. Every time that I come around, they look at a young and like, we don't know no one like you. Or the right you. Shock them all when I ride through. How they want to come over and kick it like they ride you. But I got to shine like the mind on Caillou. No time. Don't get mad because I never invite you. You was never around back whenever I tried to. Now I done became a tycoon from a haiku. Whoa. I am just an icon living. Started recognizing that my mind all different. Whoa. So fly that my time zone switching. <laughs> I'm doing this for the real ones. Oh, I didn't take the industry and flip it. Woo! Reppin' 31 until I'm finished. Woo! Finna turn my squad into a militia. And if I wanted, I manifest it into existence like. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Black Goku. I give him an icon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am not like y'all, no, nope. I am an icon, look, I do not like y'all, check it, I keep an eye out like a cyclops, gotta watch out in python, they be creeping in my lawn, tryna sneak up and bite y'all, but I'm keeping my lights on, I'm bringing my sword, case I need to come slice y'all. Legendary, boy, I'm legendary, you unnecessary, said you feeling froggy, but you leaping kinda like you February, only sometimes. <laughs> Well, I've been jumping up out of the gym like I'm Carter. I'm convinced I'm a baller. Young Prince like T'Challa. You lacking energy, better go pick up a charger. Yeah, whoa. 
Look what I look what I started. I got that liquid that water. Made up a wave, they gon' know exactly who the squad is. Turn it into a tsunami. Whoa! Jump in the game and I start a party, leaving a mark on it like a sharpie permanent. Can't nobody get rid of me. They be like, you gotta be kidding me. I never tell nobody I'm sorry. I already know I ain't apologizing. Can you hear me like Verizon? Ooh, let me rewind a powerful mind. I feel like I should remind you. Yeah. Soon as I started realizing, I could open my horizons. I could really feel my power level start rising. Now it's over 9,000. But it's really never surprising. Ay, got a plan of a steady devising. Ay, I gotta go get it, never pausing. Where the Austin? They be looking for the power like they lost it. Kinda like Waldo into the darkness, but it's inside them. They gotta find it, gotta remind them. Everyone got it. But they forgot it, forgot the knowledge, so they look at me and want me to guide them. Uh. Let me get it, I gotta mention it. I'm from another dimension, and I'm only here for a visit. Yo, I'm only here for a minute, and after that minute, I'm dipping, I'm gone. <clears throat> Oh man, he dropped the, the Thanos snap on him. like I've been having a secret inside of me, living up a society with it. Listen, I'm tired of it. Everyone's zombies under technology. They won't acknowledge it. Man, I really wish I could go on that show the other night. Open up your mind, take a little look under your face. Don't gotta wear it down when it shine. Break free from the change. You was made in the image of a great you an icon. Man, everybody hating getting wiped off. I gotta hit him with a pine saw. They talking dirty, but I might mop. They quite saw the. Just this Just is Jaden Smith. That that is not Jaden no, Smith. No, this is Ali Tamanik. Oh, okay. No, he just did the remix to Jaden. Oh, like uh, I get it. I get it. I know. I okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. Getting directions to home. <coughs> Starting move. Yeah, dude. Damn. Ali Tamanik is the shit. I really, really enjoy Ali Tamanik's work. Him and that <coughs> right now that token dude, bro. <laughs> token. Can't get over token. That dude be tearing. Dude, he's fucking nuts. Who was the, the one-take cypher guy that we listened to the, the other day? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Ollie Tominic. Was it him? Mm -hmm. Okay, Same yeah. Dude. Same guy. Yeah, all right. That, I, I was watching a few of those, man. Those guys, I, I couldn't imagine doing that. Three minutes straight off the cut, just bam, one beat, go. You can't. Um, I, I really enjoy uh, Hobson's freestyles yeah. on... Uh, Tim Westwood TV. <laughs> I had to think about which one it was. Yeah, like, dude, Tim Westwood. That shit that always goes hard as fuck, bro. Oh, man. But damn, yeah, we're a little over an hour in, man. We can go ahead and call it. Fuck play, yeah. Play some Vichy games. Fuck yeah. Hashtag Twitch, watch Skylar, watch George play video games. Uh, it's going to be the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag selfies on, shel selfies on selfies. Oh, shit. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Weekly Relapse. Love you guys. Peace.